Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today I have done the final work on my DC load here and I thought I would show you what we ended up with. There is still room for improvement and I will make some updates to the software in the future. But anyway I got the parts list sorted out so that will get on the website before I upload this video. And I have made a lot of changes to the software. So now we got the constant current mode, you've already seen that. We got a ramp current and that can ramp up the current and then start back from zero. And I plan to make it so that it could either be like a sawtooth wave or just a triangle. So it can ramp back down again, but right now it's only doing a sawtooth. We got pulse current. So here you can set a current and you can set a frequency and a duty cycle for the uh, switching of the current. And this is in milliseconds at the moment, so you can set a maximum period of 10 seconds and you can adjust the duty cycle from 0 to 100%. You set both in, in milliseconds. But there is no reason that this couldn't be longer. Say you want to switch it on for a minute, then wait a minute, switch it on for a minute, then off for a minute, and so on. So I might add a like a slow pulse current later on. And then we got the setup menu. We also got that last time, but uh, now I have made it so that it will save it to the E squared prom. This way, it will remember the settings when we switch off the power. By the way, the ramp current works so you can set a start current and an end current and a time interval for the current to ramp up or down because if you set the start current higher than the end current, it will ramp down, of course. I have also made changes to how the fan is controlled. As I said earlier, I'm driving it with a PWM signal. Before, that signal was 300 Hz and you could hear a 300 Hz hum when the fan was spinning, except at full speed. So even if the fan was just slightly spinning, it would still have this annoying 300 Hz hum. So now I upped the frequency to 30 kHz. I also tried that before, but that resulted in the fan wouldn't start up until the PWM signal reached 85% duty cycle, or something like that. The way I fixed that is to make a startup pulse. So for one quarter of a second, the fan will get full power and then it will drop down to whatever the signal level is. I might be able to make the startup pulse shorter than a quarter of a second, but I just picked a random value. And it's working. So now the fan can start up and it can slow down in RPM to just spin at a speed you can't really hear. I also thought about making a mode called uh, user waveform or user defined or something like that. And the idea is that it should work kind of like an arbitrary function generator where you can create your own waveform. In this case, it's just a load that is drawing current according to that waveform. You know, we have the ramp at the moment and we got the pulse. But what if you want, say, like a staircase or an exponential rise or something like that? Then you could just write the function on the computer and then upload it to the Arduino. I don't really have a whole lot of time right now, so I don't know if uh, I'll be able to do that within the near future. So perhaps you want to see some of this new functionality. Uh, I've connected a 18 volt battery here like in the last video. And we will try the ramp current. So just to demonstrate, we'll set the minimum current to, let's say, 500 milliamps. We will set the maximum current to 2.5 amp.
and we will set the ramp time in seconds so say 10 seconds then we can press OK and it will ask us if we want to take a single ramp up to two and a half from 500 milliamps to two and a half amp and then just switch off or we can select to repeat so it will go from 500 milliamps to two and a half amp back to 500 and so on so we will repeat and we'll press start and we can see the time and we can see the current and we can also take a look at the multimeter and we can make a trend plot well there is auto scaling on this uh, multimeter so uh, you can see the minimum is uh, 530 milliamps it says so let's also try the pulse current and here you can also select a minimum current let's try a zero amps this time Oops. and the max current let's set that to 3 amps And let's set the period to 5 seconds. And the pulse width to just uh, two and a half second. And now we get a timer and we got a high or low value here. And that corresponds to what we see on the multimeter. Well, it misses some of the vertical lines, but you kind of get the idea. And you should also be able to hear that the fan is not as noisy as in the previous videos. Let's just uh, make a constant current of 3 amps. Oh, let's take, let's take, let's take 4 amps. Just to get the fan to full speed. And we'll just wait for it to stop. So maybe you can hear the startup pulse. And there it stopped. So I'm going to start now. And so this is uh, full speed on the fan, so it can get loud, it's just it's, it's not loud all the time. And there is still a little buck you may be able to hear. Well, maybe not. But there is no uh, hysteresis on the fan, so if it, say, it toggles between 50 and 51 degrees, the fan will then spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down. So. But now that you can't hear the PWM frequency, then it's not really that annoying. So I promised in one of the previous videos to explain the code, so I'll just do that now. You can just uh, skip if you don't want to see it, but if somebody wants to kind of fiddle around with it and make their own version, it could be a good idea to kind of know what I was thinking. So to begin with, we include some files. 
the e squared prom dot h to a safe to the e prom the liquid crystal dot h for the uh, library to the LCD display the wire dot h is for the i squared c communication to the DAC and the ADC I have defined a whole bunch of pins here uh, PWM for the backlight is pin 6 all the buttons and this i squared c pin uh, A3 that is, uh, you might remember that transistor I had to add to the clock line to the DAC, I think it was. So this basically switches off the clock to the DAC when we send data to the ADC. Because it just happened that the broadcast address for the DAC was the same as the address for the ADC. Uh, I can change the address on the DAC but not the broadcast address and the address on the ADC could not be changed so I had to do that or I had to buy either another DAC or ADC well that was confusing um, the temperature sensor and the fan the temperature sensor is an analog read as well but we will get to that then we have all the modes here we have a menu Let's see. We have an ADC read function and we have a get user input. So this is uh, what I use to input the four digits you see whenever I have to enter a current or a time or whatever. That is where I use this. And some, a whole bunch of variables. Uh, they're kind of self-explanatory, I think. But So this... Uh, you will see this for all the functions. The parameters kind of selects the on which page you are in in setting up either the ramp or the pulse. So if this is, uh, I, I can't remember the exact values, but uh, if this is say zero, it will take the minimum current. One will take the maximum current. Two will take the first time period, and the last will take the last time period. It's just to keep track of where we put in the data. Timestamp is to take a, a timestamp of the milliseconds since the device was turned on. Here is some uh, variables for the repeat of, of the button presses so that it will not just count up infinitely fast when you press the button. It will make a delay for the repeat. Then we have a digit variable to select the digit that you want to change and navigation that has to do with the menu then we have a variable for the temperature one for the fan speed these two combined will give us the ADC value and I use a buffer also to make some calculations the backlight will set the backlight PWM signal 0 to 255 and this is the, the fan temp, is the temperature for the fan to turn on. And the max temp is for the load to shut down. And these will be saved in the EE prom. So this is just like a standard values. Just so that uh, they have a value when you program the Arduino. So these two are for the menu. For the buttons. And this is the if the load should be on or off. This is uh, one for flashing the digit that you are changing. And adjust is for changing that digit. And here is one for holding the back and OK button as well. Maybe they should be at the other buttons, but yeah. So this fan start uh, should actually be a timestamp as well. It's uh, used in the startup pulse for the fan. So when the fan just turns on it should always go to full speed and then after a fixed period of time it should go down to whatever the uh, microcontroller wants to set the fan speed to according to the temperature and this fan start set is just uh, if we have started the fan or not here you can change the pins for the LCD display and you can find it on the uh, Arduino side as well for like which of these numbers are which pins and I started to add some comments so this sets the PWM frequency for the fan 
we start up the I squared C and the serial. So this is for communication with the computer and this wire that begin is for communication with the DAC and the ADC. We also start up the LCD and we initialize the backlight to 200 so that is almost full brightness. And I just uh, print my shit on the screen here and the firmware revision I should actually change this to let's say it's a uh, 4.0 on 4 beta. Maybe it's not beta anymore actually. Hmm. Should I should I remove that? Nah, I well. Then we'll make it delay so you have time to get annoyed about this text. We will inform the user that we're now reading the E squared prompt and we will do that with these functions. You can also find that on the Arduino website if you want to play around with that. I just make a little delay here. Uh, of course, we should shorten these delays and remove all the uh, the serial uh, print lines. You'll see them later on. But I kind of write everything to the computer for debugging. But when the program is running, we can just comment those out, so it will not take time to do that. And we initialize the ADC and all these commands should really be found in the datasheet for the devices. And this is also why I do the calibration in these values here. I really wanted it so that the microcontroller could read a value from the E squared prompt so you could uh, change the calibration on the unit itself but I haven't uh, gotten around to that yet. So now you can uh, set it here. And it's, it's uh, very easy to find out if you just read the data sheet for the ADC. It will, it will give you the register, which is this one, and the value I've written in binary here. That is just a, a multiplier or an offset. So that's basically it. And that's the end of the ADC uh, initialization. We got another delay, and uh, we init the deck. Now you'll see that I set the I squared C pin to zero. That means that I'm activating the deck so that uh, that will listen to what we're seeing. So kind of everything that's between this digital write and this digital write where it puts it back to one, that will always be communication to the deck. So you can always see that in the code when you meet these two. If you don't see them, then it's for the ADC. And I should put some more comments on here, uh, and I will also do that when I get time to that. So now that we have initialized the deck, we just uh, set the load to zero here, just as a safety procedure or whatever. And then we are done with setting up, and we'll have another short delay here. And we get to the loop, so now this is the main program. These first few lines are taking care of the button presses. So, yeah, not really much to say about that. And then we get to this if mode equals zero statement here, and that is basically uh, the menu. If, if mode is zero, that means you are out in the menu, where you can select uh, which current setting you want, or you can go to the setup menu. This navigation variable will be the up and down button presses. So if you press up, this will be set to plus one. Or if you press minus, it will be set to minus one. If we uh, select a mode that is not there, it will automatically set it to back to one or to four. And when I add more modes, I will increase this. Then I just use a switch statement to select the mode and some if statements to call that function. And we'll take a look at these functions later on. And this function called menu should actually be called setup menu because it's where you set up the stuff that it's saved to the E squared prompt. 
then we get the temperature from the temperature sensor uh, and I think I could do this in one line but yeah uh, we take the temperature multiplied by 98 and then divided by 200 and we will print the temperature to the um, console or the uh, serial terminal and again all these you should really comment them out uh, if you are not debugging or changing the software all these serial print and serial print line then we get to the fan control here and it will basically compare the temperature to the fan temp so this is when the fan should turn on and if it's not already on and the temperature is higher than the fan then it will set this variable that it should start the fan and it will take a timestamp of when it did that so then we go down to if the fan set up here is set and it is if the temperature is higher of course then we will compare this uh, timestamp to what the current time is and if a quarter of a second has not passed then it will you can see set the fan to full speed oops sorry that's down here to full speed else it will up here it will calculate a speed for the fan that is dependent on the temperature it will take the difference between the set temperature and the actual temperature and it will multiply that by 4 and then it will add 190 because the fan doesn't really spin until 190 uh, out of 255 and then if it gets greater than 255 it will set it back to 255 it's just so it doesn't screw with the microcontroller because that expects a value between 0 and 255 then another bunch of zero prints I also used this to to debug and then if the temperature gets lower than the set temperature it will turn off the fan again and here we will write the value that we just created to the fan if the temperature exceeds the maximum temperature it will print out a warning on the screen saying warning over temperature it will shut the load down and it will make a delay for 10 seconds so you basically can't do anything for 10 seconds uh, I have to change this also because for these 10 seconds you can't uh, you can't switch off the load either on the uh, uh, cancel button but then again the load is, is set to zero so yeah, it doesn't really matter but you kinda want to switch it off if you see a warning that's what I mean <laughs> but it will turn on uh, automatically after this so it will just uh, when the temperature has fallen it will turn on the load again and it will rise up to the maximum temperature again uh, but during that time you can switch it off of course here we will set the backlight and here we will print the navigation this is also for debugging and after we have done the menu stuff we will set the navigation the OK button and back button back to zero so just uh, yeah we have to do that now we get down to the functions themselves and we will just uh, skip a few and start the menu so here we are in the menu and here you can see the different menu pages if we're on page 0 then we will ask for the backlight and we can adjust that uh, here I actually don't use the, uh, the user input function because uh, the user input function will give us a four digit value and here we only want like uh, you know 255 as the maximum and I have chosen to increment in steps of five just so you shouldn't uh, be holding down the button forever so to set it to either to zero or to four and here is for the uh, the fan temperature it's kind of the same deal also for the max temperature and then here at the last page we will put the menu page back to zero because we're done the mode will be put back to zero that means that we are going back to the menu uh, the main menu 
Then we will save it to the eSquare prompt. We will just print out a message. And we will do a little ball loop. This is just uh, for it to look nice. This, this actually does nothing because it will, it will write the things down here. The for loop will just make a little loading bar go across the screen just to look nice. So that was it. Uh, let's take a look at the constant current function. So the constant current function is here. We will write some stuff to the LCD. Then we will, uh, and then we will set the user input equal to the milliamp current. This will explain itself later on, but it's just so it will not reset back to zero when you uh, stop the the load again. And then the milliamp current will uh, be set equal to get user input. And this, as I said before, is taking a four-digit value. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. And then again, if the milliamp current is greater than eight point to almost amps, it will be set back to this value. And of course less than zero cannot be done, so it will be set to zero. And if the digit is zero, that means we are flashing the OK symbol or start. It could be also. It depends on which uh, menu you're in. But if we have selected the OK on the screen and we press the OK button, then it will start the load. And this last if statement will take you back to the main menu if you press the back button. This if adjust equals equals zero is actually uh, so that you can't go back if you are currently adjusting a value. Uh, it's just something I added because I found it annoying if I pressed the back instead of the OK when I had to you know, accept the value that I entered. So to make a long story short, you can only go back if you are not adjusting a digit. And I actually should put an extra AND sign here, uh, because this is two Boolean expressions. And uh, if I put a single AND sign, it would be like a bitwise operation. And the result will be the same in this case, but it's just good practice to do as you're supposed to do. If uh, start equals 1, so if we press the start button or the OK button up here, we will go down here. We will set the load equal to the milliamp current and the ADC buffer will be equal to the ADC read. And the reason why I use this ADC buffer is to make sure that the digits will not jump around when I go from say 10 milliamps to 100 milliamps. Uh, on the LCD display, if I didn't have this, it would write the 1 in the first rectangle of the LCD display, and then as you go up in current, it would add the zeros to the right of that. But I kind of want these 1 milliamps to always line up, so I print a blank space in front of them for every decade that they are less than a thousand, if that makes sense. Uh, you also saw that on the display, but it's just so that, say, if we take a constant current of 10 milliamps, you can see we get 11 milliamps and a few blank spaces. So that if I have 100, it will put one here, a thousand, it will put one here. So that all this milliamp and everything doesn't shift back and forth. And if we press the back button, it will go back to the previous menu and it will shut down the load. And here we have the get user input function. And here we will do the same trick as when we have the constant current going, except that instead of blank spaces, we will just put a zero. So you can see there is actually a digit to change. And we will print our value to the screen. 
and we will put an OK button. And if we are not changing a digit, then we have to select between the digits and we'll make these two arrows. If we are changing a value, we will change the arrows to set. Just so we can see... Yeah, you, know, you get the idea. We will flash the digit that we are currently changing. And all this stuff will do that. So if we scroll down a little bit further, we get two important variables here. The adjust and the digit. The adjust means if we are trying to select which digit we want to adjust or if we are actually adjusting a digit. So let me demonstrate. So now we can select a digit. Now adjust will be equal to zero. If we press OK, we can set a digit and adjust will be equal to one at the moment. So if we are adjusting and the digit is less than 1001 and the digit represents the decade that we want to adjust so the digit can either be 1, 10, 100 or 1000 uh, and if it's 1001 that means we are out of range. If this is true then the user input will become user input plus the digit so the decade times the navigation. The navigation is just a button press either up or down. So this can be 1 or minus 1. And if the digit is 1, well, it will add or subtract 1 for each press. If we add the 10th digit, it will add or subtract 10, and so on for the 100 and the 1000s. And it will set navigation equal to 0, so it will register that our button press has been registered. And the next time we press OK, it will just uh, go back to selecting a digit. And that is what we do down here. If navigation is greater than 0, then the digit will become digit divided by 10. And if the other button is pressed, digit will become digit multiplied by 10. Oh, I think I said something wrong actually. I think I said that if the digit was higher than 1001, that would mean we were selecting the OK button. Uh, that's actually not true. Uh, if the digit is equal to zero, that means we are on the OK button. Uh, I did it the other way around to begin with, but now I remember that I changed it. Because this is, um, yeah, this, this makes it a bit easier. So now that we got all this, it will check if the value is within our limits and it will return the input to whatever function called it. Let's just take a very quick look at the ADC read function. It will send the commands needed to get the values from the ADC and it will take too long to explain all this but you can find it in the datasheet. And uh, I've used the, the example from the wire library in the Arduino so it should be fairly easy to find out. And also we will print all these values over the serial to the computer so we can debug it. Um, but basically we will bit shift the low value into the high value here. Oh sorry, the mid value. Boom, 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 yeah. I don't actually think I use the low value. Nope. You can see I print it but I don't use it. And it's because uh, we only need 16 bits. So we just have to divide it by 4 to get our uh, current in milliamps. And we'll return that. So basically we just get the values, we bit shift it in, so the, the mid will be added to a shifted version of the high, and we'll divide it by 4. That's it. And the set load, uh, we will pass it a current here. So we need to send a 16-bit value to the deck, and we get this by multiplying our milliamps by 8. We will have to split this into two bytes, 8 bits each, uh, so a deck low and a deck high. The low, we can just assign the value uh, up here, 16-bit value, 
and it will discard all the high bits. The high bit or the, the high byte, we will have to shift this value by 8. And we will print it uh, to the console. And then again, we will activate the communication to our deck and we will send the data and shut down the communication again. And that's basically it. And we can also quickly go through the ramp current here. The pulse current will be somewhat equal to this, but uh, of course the parameters will be a little bit different because it doesn't have to make the ramps. We will print our usual stuff to the screen and we will uh, again assign the current value to the user input when we open this uh, just so that it will kind of remember the value then we will change the RAM minimum to get user input we already looked at that it will make sure it's within the limits and if we press the OK button uh, to continue it will increase the RAM parameters by one and we can go back to the previous screen also and then now we check if the RAM parameters is 1 then we'll set the max current uh, exactly the same deal and then uh, RAM parameters 2 we'll set the time it's uh, exactly the same deal except that now we don't have to limit it to 8192 now we can use the full 9999 uh, seconds the ramp is in seconds while the pulse is in milliseconds. I kind of thought it would make sense that way. Uh, I don't really see why we would need a ramp shorter than one second. Uh, but we could use pulses in that way. And then in parameter free, it will ask us if we want a single or if we want to repeat. And that's basically it. And then if we start, then if we haven't taken a timestamp, we will take one. And we will print ramp active on the screen. We will create a long current time, and that will be equal to our milliseconds minus our timestamp. This way we can keep track on how far we are on the ramp. We will calculate the difference between our maximum and minimum current and we will use that later on. We will print the time to the screen in seconds and again we will add these blank spaces if we are less than 1110 just so it won't shift on the screen. Then we will make a long calculation and this will basically calculate uh, which current we need at uh, a given time so this will change over time and then we will set load our long calculation here so each time we run through the loop it will update the current and of course we have a problem with all these uh, serial dot print line and serial print because that will take some time to send all these serial commands to the computer and that will uh, limit the update rate of uh, the RAM current so it will be like more like a staircase if we zoom into it. it it's actually good enough as it is right now but it will be uh, improved a lot if we comment out all these uh, serial calls and then we display the uh, the current current <laughs> on the screen and we will check if the ramp is finished here and if we have set the repeat, if we have uh, set the repeat, then we'll just take a new timestamp, and the the logic above will just uh, automatically start again from where it should start. Then, if we haven't set it to repeat, we will exit here, and that's kind of it. And of course, we can always exit by pressing the back button. Uh, I know this is a little bit confusing, but I also kind of just added on top of uh, stuff that I already have made, so it could probably be optimized a whole lot, but then again, I don't really have that much time right now, so it's working, and uh, that's it. 
you are of course welcome to make any changes you want and uh, if you think that you make some improvements uh, I would really like you to send me the software so I can try it out and if it's better than mine I would maybe ask if I could put it on my website for others to download. So I don't think we have to look at the pulse current because if you understood this then you will also understand that. And if you didn't understand this, well, it doesn't surprise me. I'm sorry. <laughs> because it is a little bit complicated and it should probably have been divided into some more useful functions and stuff like that so we could get a better overview of everything. But then again, when I started this program, I wasn't really a master of C or C++. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm still not, but... It's gotten a lot better since I started this, anyway. You can see I made a, a few stupid mistakes that I didn't catch because it uh, didn't result in any errors. So, I think this will be it for this project. Uh, you will of course see this uh, load in my other videos when I have to use it. And I have already used it a lot actually for testing stuff and things like that. And I think it's actually it's actually okay. The calibration on it is still not 100%. Uh, uh, I also discussed this in some previous videos that uh, it's not quite linear. It's reading a little bit high on the low currents. Uh, I can get it uh, to be spot on between say 3 amps and 7 amps but then it will be a fair amount off down in the few milliamps. So I kind of tweaked it so where it's acceptable, but I will have to make some changes in the software. Uh, it could also be that I could uh, optimize the ADC a little bit. Uh, there are some parameters uh, you can set in the registers that will kind of change how it behaves um, in that region uh, near ground and near the top rail. I use the, uh, the ground in the whole system as the negative reference for the ADC. And they do mention in the datasheet that uh, that could lead to some problems. And they also tell what you can do to improve it a little bit, uh, but I haven't looked into that. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll of course uh, make a video if I make any changes to the software or to anything else. And one thing I forgot to mention actually, <laughs> I just remembered. Uh, I put a pin on the... Uh, uh, board down there so you can read the voltage of these two terminals as well. Uh, I don't use it yet in the software but uh, the option is there so you can uh, you can do that yourself if you want. Uh, it's connected to the other channel of the ADC so quite a lot have to be changed in the code to be able to read it but uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, anyway, I will get around to that but uh, then again I don't know when. So, again, thanks for watching this video and uh, I will see you in the next one. See you.